What's going on, everybody? It's the Jeffrey Hart here. Got a, uh, what do I have for you? It's a drum rack. It's a MIDI effect rack that helps you create drum fills to generate drum fills, much like the ones that you just heard in this little ditty that I did here. You can see the automation for the different, uh, you know, knobs and so forth. But let's jump over here to something a little bit less crazy. And here's without the drum rack. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. But let's get crazy. Oh, nice. Eh, okay. Gets all the ladies. So let's talk about how this works. Now this here is just a slice to MIDI that I did on a drum loop that I had. And uh, you can apply this technique to session drums or superior drummer or uh, drum racks that you've created or even impulse, whatever. Um, and the way, I guess, kind of working backwards here is um, the first thing you want to do is remap using a scale device to the important drums that you want to focus on. So if we uh, drag a scale down here, and let me demonstrate that briefly. So that's a kick. That's good. That's going to be part of our fill. That's a hi-hat. That's bad. So let's take this little knob. And now every time that note's played, it's going to be a kick. Now that's a kick. Now it's a snare. Uh, there we go. You get the idea? I hope so. Because if not, you're not very smart. Alright, great. So now you're basically only getting kicks and snares in your fill. And we'll just put one hi-hat in there just for, you know, switch things up a little bit. But now when the random generates, we don't need this anymore. When it generates random notes, what's tight is that the scale is going to conform it to actually usable notes instead of just completely random. So it's just like a drummer is going to do something. I mean, honestly, it's going to be random, but he's going to focus on the kick and the snare. So that's that. Now the arpeggiator just decides how it's played using the style and um, how fast using the rate. Now the style, you know, that's it is how it's played, but it's not really how it's played because it's really random. But, um, you know, if you change these parameters a little bit, you can alter the fills, you know, so just twist it around. See what happens. And that's really the the drum rack. Start to finish. Um so let's just uh let's let's see what kind of different stuff we can come up with here. Let's do this. Oh, let's turn it on. Cool. And now let's bring the chance up so that the stale, uh, cause the, this, the sync rate, that's only, you know, it's taking all the notes that are being played and, and turning them into, you know, one, one twelfths or whatever, but it's not conforming it to the scale because the way that's mapped. So let's do. And so the, where this is, is going to change the notes. See what the style does. Okay, not a whole lot because it's probably just not a long enough phrase for anything to happen. So let's go here. See what the style does now. Yeah, you know, can't win them all. But um, really, these are the your the two biggest focuses. How fast is it going to happen and how much 
randomization is there going to be? And that's pretty much it. Now, the style does do some very slight different things because it just depends on when the different notes are going to get played based on how these two parameters are set. So if you know how to work the arpeggiator, maybe you know you can take that a little bit further. But in general, it's just something that I thought would be nice to throw in there, and you can turn it and uh, make it a little bit different. This is something I haven't tried. Let's see this. Is. Make them all eighth notes. Oh, yeah. So if you wanted to do that, you could do that too. Swing it up a little bit. All right, so that's it. I'll upload the rack, and uh, I hope you enjoy it, and thanks for watching.